originally. What, what initially kind of like captivated us about this house would be the river. <laughs> I have to admit, it was definitely the river. It was the way that uh, it was the age of the house and the way that it was situated on the river and on a river that was um, so full of, you know, interest and, and all of these like cool things. So it was initially the river, but then it was also the style. We've always loved old homes and this house is a Queen Anne Victorian. Um, so it was the age, it was the fact that a lot of the architectural details were still intact. That was really appealing and exciting. Um, and it was the town too. We were looking for a town like Winnemac. So it was the package. It was all those things. Mm -hmm. I think also for us, at least for me growing up, I lived in houses that were built, subdivisions. So our last home was built in the 40s and was only owned by one one family for that entire time. So once we got into the house and we started learning more about the history of the town and it's, you know, who used to live here and everything, it was really, really drew us in even further because most of my experience has been sort of um, houses that were just put up really quick, sold and built in big, massive subdivisions. So having the lot be on the river and having this big, beautiful old home was, was really intriguing for us. I think one of the, one of the sort of sad bits of history, but was also one of the really interesting ones is, so the second owner of the home, the house was built in 1895 by um, a person named Frank Dukes, who was a local attorney. And he basically built it as an investment. He bought the land from a client of his. He owned it for a couple years while he built the house and then he sold it. Um, but the person who bought it, that person's name was James Gill and he was a super Superintendent of the CNO Railroad out of Huntington, West Virginia. He was stationed in Huntington, West Virginia. And uh, he was a Winnemac boy, went out, worked the railroad, worked his way up, became a prominent executive, and then um, tragically lost his daughter at a very young age during childbirth. So he took the baby and came back here, bought this house from Dukes, and then raised that boy here. Um, with his wife and then eventually his sister lived here. So following that story and then the, the career of that person, we've, re we've dug in really deep on ancestry. He's buried in the Winnemac Cemetery. We've gone over and, and visited him. Um, we found a picture of him. It's actually hanging in the little vestibule near the front door. Um, so that was one really cool thing that we uncovered that we're still kind of uncovering. As far as resources that have been helpful in the research, there have been a few people that have been just invaluable. One is Brian Capuch, so the person who facilitated this uh, this class that we we've been taking. He knows anything and everything to do with abstracts and titles, and he helped us decode all of those things that you know all, only a real estate attorney would be able to do. Um, so that was an invaluable resource. There's also um, the Pulaski. County Library. So we would we would look up names and dates and things at the recorder's office and then we would go to the library and look up newspapers from that same time period. And um, that's how we've been able to find a lot of like the qualitative history. So the uh, the stories of the people where they worked, um, what, you know, able to track how the house was built and who built it. We were able to uncover the name of the contractor, um, who hired them, how much plaster they used, <laughs> how many linear feet of plaster, all of these cool things. Yeah, the boathouse for us was uh, really interesting because it, um, the previous owners remade it into a music studio. Uh, it was really nice to be able to have a separate space to do it and just set it up and have it be comfortable and soundproof. And I mean, it's a, it's the original old boathouse, so it really has a lot of the same um, exterior, you know, view and flair of, of the time. And it's just one of the, it's really amazing thing to be able to sit and play, you know, whatever instrument and stare out onto the river and see otters play and fish jump in, in the water. It's really, it's really amazing. One thing that's, um, hopefully that people can feel inspired to know about researching their old home is we went into this knowing absolutely nothing. Brian Capuch asked us uh, if we had an abstract of title and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. And then we came to the first class session and it was like, oh wait, I didn't even know what that was. Um, so we came in knowing almost nothing. Um, quite literally. So it, it, it all felt, um, eventually it all became very doable and realistic and attainable. And we learned so much about like what it means to have property change hands and what things get 
taxed and don't. And, you know, I, I think one thing that was really fun was just putting, you know, so there's a tactical aspect to researching the history of your home. So going to the uh, recorder's office and looking up you know, when records changed hands, but then there's also that human interest element that's really fun. And being able to see things in the home that were mentioned, there are things in the basement that are mentioned in the newspaper in 1898 when they're talking about how the house was built. Um, so I think I would just want people to know that uh, it is, a, it's, um, it's more, perhaps more attainable than it seems and it's not uh, super intimidating. And there are so many people out there who are so passionate about doing this that are just eager to help so eager to help that you almost can't keep up with them um, so I, I think I hope that other people um, you know choose to go down a similar path because it's been very rewarding I think the surprising thing too is just how much information is actually out there um, the fact that you can read about you know, just seeing the history of how when anything happened in, in the town, it was in the newspaper. Someone came to visit, it was in the newspaper. So you see your house and who's visiting your house and who was born in your house and who may have passed in your house and all these different interesting facts that, you know, you don't really ever get to know when you buy some, you know, a house that may not have as much history or a town that may not keep as many records or it was very, very surprising to me to be able to see down to that detail.